The oh. system is in orb, and you just put the disc oh. into it. You know what's really funny about? Um, oh my god, I'm looking at it right <laughs> now. <laughs> you know, no, save you know one of those, add like? it into the show notes because people need to see that. It's so bad. It looks like the ship that crashed in Prometheus. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Welcome back to This Week in Gaming. Uh, I am Proxy. I'm Sarah. I'm still not Jeff, also sometimes referred to as Cornelius. <laughs> they are one and the same. Yeah. Jeff will not be joining us tonight, but that's okay. We've got corn here. Yep. Uh, corn sure has, I'm pretty sure, just leveled up to 36 in Animal Crossing. Jeez. Fuck you. I just hit level 18. <laughs> oh, by the way, I everybody. Like 13, 14. I got a new phone. Okay, listen. I got a new phone on, what, Wednesday night? And I have been doing nothing but playing Animal Crossing because now I can. <laughs> it's consumed my life. I hope you know that just because you brought that up, this entire episode is going to be called Sent from My iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> So we've all been picking on Sarah because she got an iPhone, but really it's it's a huge benefit for all of us because the rest of us are on Android. Yeah. And we can't get those sweet, sweet Apple apps when yeah. they come out like new games. There's Apple tons. apps. Especially Apple considering apps. that Apple game apps. company is coming out with uh, Sky. With Sky. Which I looked it up to see if there was like, because sometimes games will come up on Android. Apps will come up that are like, you can be the beta or you can be notified when this actually launches, like Animal Crossing. But... There was nothing for Sky yet, so I'm keeping my eye on it, though. Even if it costs, like, five bucks, I will set aside five bucks so I can fucking buy it. I'm, I want it really bad. I looked up that game company in the App Store, though, and it popped up with Flower in the App Store for $1.99. I mean, Flower really and I was pretty made sure use of the six-axis controls for the PlayStation 4, uh, 3. So, so it kind of makes sense. It, it makes sense because you yeah. have the tilt controls with it. So if it's is it free? Uh, no, I think it was like $1.99 or something like that. Okay. So I didn't, I mean, didn't want to buy it yet in case it honestly, wasn't legit. Honestly, it is a very relaxing game. <laughs> if it is legitimately by that game company and they did put it on iPhone, I would highly recommend downloading it and checking it out. Yeah, I probably will. Because it'll give you that kind of journey vibe without... Not Being the journey. full journey vibe, yeah. but it's, I do it's enjoy pretty close. A journey vibe. As long as it's relaxing, because there's some parts of journey that really stress me oh, out every no, time I watch. Flower is like 100%. I couldn't find oh. stress within that game at all. Good. That's great. <laughs> I mean, I've had some moments of real stress in journey. Oh, my God. And there's, I need to look up, um, there's this game called Rise mm -hmm. that I've been seeing around GameStop that the art style looks very journey-esque. And... So it intrigues me because it's not, as far as I know, it's not by that game company. Or if it is, they don't have their name on the box. Hmm. So different developer, but it still looks really cool. And I kind of want to see if it's worth getting into. Yeah. Because like I never would have thought to buy Abzu if it wasn't free. Right. For that but one it month, ended up and being it's such a great game. Yeah. It ended up being really Shit great. Shit controls, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not the greatest in Us. controls. It's, yeah. Like trying to control a boat on land it, uh, with like a toothpick. <laughs> As for for a rudder, <laughs> yeah. Oh, as the not as the helm. Just no, just twisting a toothpick. Yeah. No, yeah. It's the, the toothpick is the rudder, and the toothpick <laughs> is digging into the cement and trying to turn the boat. <laughs> yeah, but it's just a toothpick, so it's really not doing a, <coughs> not doing a great job. I'll say you're like super drunk. Uh, you have to be on rum because you're <laughs> a land pirate, Corey. <laughs> how, did you, how else would you have ended up in this situation? Don't get the Tennessee honey. I'm okay. getting the Tennessee honey. <laughs> It's going to be one of those podcasts. I love <laughs> that there was just enough of a pause between Tennessee and Honey that you were like, don't get the Tennessee, Come honey. On, honey. <laughs> honey, don't get the Tennessee. Anyway. Just don't. <laughs> don't. We're going we're gonna to get going and we're going to have to go fast. Uh, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, would you maybe please tell me about some Sanic the Hedgehog? I'd love to. Because... Sonic Forces, the newest game that just came out, the one that you the one that I can no longer not associate with the Game Grumps abomination of a character. Oh my God, it's so good. Um, I mean, beautiful character. The one where you can it's you play in three D, you play in two D, kind of like your character is three D, but you're in the two D. You play as yourself. Scroll. You play as Sonic. You play as other Sonic. You play as your own persona, and you can yeah, customize persona. your outfits. 
And my favorite thing. <laughs> my persona. My persona. Oh my god! So sorry. <laughs> I put. Uh, it's a long running joke. It is. If I, anyone from uh, North American Anime Alliance is listening, they know. Yeah. Um, side note: oh. I put my Sharona on our like car song playlist oh, at like no. three in the morning one night when I was really <laughs> tired, and when it came up in shuffle, I was like, "Oh my god, I trolled myself." <laughs> It's like when you accidentally put uh, Rick Astley on your yeah your playlist. I also didn't remember adding uh, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, but I sure did, and it was a good decision. Oh, <laughs> such a good song. So what about Sonic Forces? Okay, aside Sonic from Force. playing as so your own persona, they <laughs> they have paid tribute to the Sonic the Hedgehog meme, and you can get a shirt, a T-shirt that has the Sonic Sonic the Hedgehog drawn oh, on oh it. Oh no! It's My amazing. God, it's amazing. as an in-game item. Yeah, like oh. like when you complete levels and you get like items. I don't know if it's like you right. start up the game and you automatically get it, or if you have to earn it or whatever. Screams but into you oblivion. Just, that's the T-shirt, and it's amazing because that meme is six years old. Isn't that crazy? That's like a million years for a meme. It really is. And it's still so popular and still so funny. Memes turn over so quickly. It's ridiculous. Memes turn over so funny that one day I discovered a meme that I was six hours behind on and it was already over. And I was like, what happened here? I feel like, like memes show up faster than I can keep track of them. They Have do. Have you noticed that, um, like, you know how clothing styles just kind of <coughs> circle so, like, things that were in style once and then went out of style are now back in style. Yeah. I right. feel like that's happening with memes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't know if anyone else has noticed it. I saw... But I sure have. Someone unironically on Twitter a few days ago used the troll face. Unironically. Wow. All right. And I th- was immediately transported back to that's 2003. Good for them. That's straight up old school. <laughs> How far in the Google search did they have to, like, go? I remember when in the days of memes when it was a multicolored background yeah. separated into, like, a pizza pie, eight pieces, and it was, like, either orange and dark orange or blue and dark blue. Or sometimes it'd be a rainbow. Yeah. And then it was the face of an animal or a person in the middle of it, and it just had text or yeah. wraps around yeah. it. So you had, like, socially awkward penguin, courage wolf. Yeah. Um, success kid. Yeah. Bachelor Frog, one of my favorites. Yeah. See, like, um, I'm in the old person brain that, like, does meme just mean joke now? Yeah, it meme really is does. essentially meme just is an just inside. Joke. It's an inside joke that the whole internet's in on. It's just a joke. Yes. Well, that's all it is. Um, As opposed to meme, which is your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> There's I just like to clarify for people who don't know how to pronounce things or, you know, treat the English language like a redheaded stepchild. One of the, um, it's, Ooh, it's Courage close. Wolf mixed with another one of those memes. It's like Courage Wolf, but mixed with Dread. I can't remember exactly what it was, but my friend invented it. It became really popular hmm. when those memes we were tried really popular. To do, we really tried cool. to make Fail Scott back in the day. My uh, my buddy Scott Pickles. He uh, Wow. Yeah. We just took a, a catch of it, like a screen cap of his face and put it over a meme, like multicolored background. And we put stupid things that he did, like <laughs> snorting Jack Daniels. Oh, my God. And uh. Yeah, it was it was bad. We had two of them. They went up on uh, the website no one talks about. And that was about the gist of it. So anyway, memes aside, yeah. it's pretty neat that they're acknowledging it, though. What I mean, it's really funny. I don't think it's that strange being six years old because like you just look for Sonic memes or Sonic things that the Internet liked and you know, it's Sonic, so they're going to acknowledge it. It's, yeah. I like it. Everything is, time is a flat circle, bro. Um, <laughs> like, that made me really happy. And Jeff was really sweet and got me Sonic Forces for Christmas. Oh, and immediately, yes. like, as soon as he got home, he was like, okay, this is for Christmas, but I can't, I literally can't wait, so here it is. And then he looked at it, and I was like, <laughs> honey, <laughs> marry me. <laughs> you love me. You really love me. <laughs> exactly. Like, I was just going to wait until, like, it's months just, from now. Sarah turned into Rudolph from the old stop motion animation. And was like, <laughs> he thinks I'm cute. And then she flew off into the sunset. It was wonderful. I did. I was, like, in the middle of making something, too, and I'm, like, covered in sweet potato. And I was just like, ah. It was really weird. Um, I'm not trying to be sappy. It's the onion. <laughs> I didn't put onions in the sweet potato. Shut up. Oh, that'd be nasty. Um, okay, so... 
we have to move on. This, okay. This is what happens when Jeff isn't here. We just um, get all sorts of off topic. Destiny, Destiny 2. Destiny 2, fun. Destiny 2, which Destiny I friggin' cannot wait to play. Yeah. Um, For those that don't know, I am two weeks away from being done with finals and completely graduated college. Hell yeah. I'm in the grind right now, and Jeff went out and bought me Destiny 2. About a week ago for yep. Black Friday. Yep. And it is now sitting on my game shelf in the shrink wrap, and I cannot play it because I know I'll just lose track of everything and fail. The yep. real fun part about that is that he literally bought it from you. <laughs> from me, for me, He by bought me. your Christmas present from you. Yeah, and for then, you. And then gave it to you later and that again. day. Yep. I was half expecting him just to be like, here, you keep this here, and I would have lost it, like... Lost the game within everything else behind the counter. It yeah, gotten no. Put back away or something. No, Jeff would be. The, Jeff's too worried about things like that. Check out this sweet band that I got from work the other day. The Power Up Rewards Elite Pro. Oh, so fancy. Yeah, I might see about grabbing Jeff one because I guess it's just like a thing we have for people who sign up for it. And I'm like, I signed up. I want one. So tell me about what Proxy is missing with Destiny Two. Yeah, what am I missing? Uh, well, actually, not that much. There's a free trial that started this past Tuesday, Ooh. which is really cool. Um, it includes two of the game's locations, European Dead Zone and Titan. Okay. The Moon Titan. Um, and you can relax at the farm. I asked Jeff for clarification on the grammar there, because I don't know if the farm is, if you're in the farm, if you're at the farm. I don't know. So you have to buy the farm first? Is that? No, you get the cow for free. Okay. Um, so why no, buy the milk can, if you can get the cow so for free? You have two play. yes, you have two playable zones and then you can just chill at the farm. What a strange phrase. No, you get the cow for free. Yeah. It's, <laughs> um, why buy the milk? You can play in competitive multiplayer in the Crucible, but only quick play, I guess. And you can join clans and earn clan experience. And players will be able to advance up to level seven before being like stopped. And if you buy the game in the future, like on that same account, your progress will obviously stay with you. I couldn't, for the life of me, find an end date for the free trial. I don't know if it's, like, permanent, if they're always just going to have this free trial, or if one day suddenly they're going to be like, okay, it's over, you've had your fun. But I, I for the life of me, I couldn't find an end date. Mm-hmm. So it started, and I guess if you really want to try Destiny 2, like, go do it. Sweet. I, yeah. If I had my own... Thingy. Your own station of play. Jeff owns Destiny 2. Never mind. I'm dumb. Um, yeah, slow clap for my intelligence. It's been a long day. Um, also, Destiny. Okay, Alexa is that Amazon? The little thing? Amazon robot, right? Yeah, Helio. it's like Siri, but for your house. Yeah, uh, would, and it's, it's also different from Google Home. It's like Smart House, yeah. but not by Disney. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have made a ghost version of Alexa from Destiny. Yeah, I just like, looked it up the, before this podcast. The and little pokey it's, dude with oh. the lights. And he's amazing. I guess uh, I'm really confused as to oh, how it works because so I don't cute. really know how Alexa works. Is it is it like the hub of it? I think the ghost itself, it's right. literally like the ghost machine. Yeah. I think that's the hub. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you think of um, Alexa in the same way you think of Google uh, Google Home. Yeah. I wanted to say Google Gnome because of the <laughs> April Fool's joke they did forever ago. Uh, no, the Google Home where it is the hub. It connects to your network. Yeah. And you can essentially talk to it and ask it to do things. <clears throat> um, that is like, I don't play Destiny. But I want that. I'm familiar with it. But I absolutely want that because yeah. that just makes, it brings a little bit of video game into like real life. Yeah. Even more so than just having like. A little statue. Yeah. I, I would love... it'll talk to you. I, I love the idea it'll of be being able friend. to ask my robot to do stuff for yeah. me or tell me things. Oh. What a bargain price, too. Yeah. Um, what is I'm the price lo- on it? I'm looking at it on Amazon. I Alexa normally is, so this is a bargain price to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm looking at it on Amazon, and it's eighty nine ninety nine with free shipping. What? Um, it releases December 19th of this year, which is really cool. Um, I'm going to have to look into that. I might be buying one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's really fucking cool. Like, I, I don't want an Alexa. My mother-in-law was like, do you guys want that Alexa thing? And I was like, it'd be really cool, but I don't want something waiting for me to say its name all the time. Mm. I don't want some, I don't want to be like, I really need more toothpaste and it will buy me 50 boxes of toothpaste. I don't need right. that in my life. Um, but you realize if, if you get it though, you are absolutely obligated to start buying something 
like your day to day life something like toilet paper. You gotta buy it on Amazon now. Yep. Just so you can be like, hey ghost. Yeah. You know, I've thought about Hey, can you buy me some toilet paper? Doing stuff like that through Amazon just because I feel like for generic day to day items like toilet mm-hmm. paper, it would probably be right. super convenient to be hey, like Hey Alexa, I'm out of the pancake mix. <laughs> Go get me some. Uh well the thing about a lot of household stuff on Amazon is it's if it is cheaper, it's like marginally cheaper. Like I've yeah. looked at the cleaning products I use and it's like nine bucks for a three pack, which is fine, but it's less than three dollars at Walmart. So it's like, eh, sometimes it's not really a win. It's just convenient. Yeah. But I don't know. Oh, the best part about the ghost that you can just have in your home is it's voiced by Nola North. I could just that have was my next question. I could just have was, Nola North in my house all the time. Which isn't that worth the price tag alone? Yes. <laughs> Yes. I think it is. So that's amazing. Um, so 90 bucks, like, come on, that's awesome. Uh, that's all the Destiny 2 news I have, though. So, because usually I don't touch on it, because it's always like free XP or Destiny 2 was down for maintenance. And it's like, cool, that was on Tuesday. No one gives a fuck. Well, sweet. That's a lot of stuff <laughs> in the world of Destiny. Sure is. Yeah. Moving right along. Okay. Super Mario Odyssey came out a little while ago. Yes, it did. We're all familiar with it. I've heard some amazing things about yeah. Super Mario Odyssey. Um, there's going to be <laughs> Super Mario cereal. Are you being like cereal right now? Uh, or is Mario being cereal? Hey. Hey, is it going to be super cereal? Yes. I'm doing um, finger guns at proxy. <laughs> sure it's are. It's literally to promote Odyssey. They're making cereal to promote the game. Because it, it even though it's one of the best-selling games Ever, they it's still not actually enough. one of Nintendo's best-selling systems since yeah. the N64. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really similar to Lucky Charms. It's got like the cereal bits and the marshmallows, but Mario theme. So it's like it's got little green one-up uh, marshmallows, mushroom, mushroom marshmallows, Mushmer. and what look like Goombas. They were just like little brown blobs in the picture, but they were probably just Goombas and like stars and stuff. And it's really That's fucking cute. cool. Um, the cereal launches December 11th. Okay, now hear me out. Next week. We go and buy a box when it launches. And, Hell yeah. Uh, next week, we live taste test. Oh, that can be like it's a, just ASMR. ASMR. I would be is that a, so AS, happy. Yeah, ASMR mukbang just twig crunch, podcast. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Got to get that crunch. I promise crunch. we will never do that on this podcast. We'll make a new podcast Gotta just for sure that. Got to make sure you do the, the open mouth chew. That Oh, I hate it. Um, <laughs> no one eats cereal well. <laughs> no. <coughs> Close your goddamn mouth. Um, the box, because, you know, what doesn't need to be an Amiibo? The box has, like, Amiibo features. I guess you use it. You hover it over your Switch thing, and it'll just do stuff for Mario. I'm just going to put the box on my Amiibo shelf. Yeah. Um, Make sure I register that Amiibo to Smash. Mom, where's my Amiibo? What, that box? I threw it away. No! Mom, no! It that was box good. was level seven! <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it just unlocks stuff for Super Mario Odyssey. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I, also recycled? Don't throw it out. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find what st- any, if any stores specifically are like going to do it, but I assume Target because Target's yeah. all up on Nintendo right now. So that's going to be the first place I look. That and probably. whenever like, food products seem to come out that are related to video games, Target's all up on it's that. always Target. When they're related <clears throat> to anything, fandom, anything. Yeah. They're, Target's they're like. That. They're better Walmart. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. I'm not an ad for Target. Oh my God, Target, Same. Target, 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 up. Target, sponsor us, Target. <laughs> I will shop at you every week. Um, okay, that was it for the cereal. I am super pumped, and I think that when is December 11th? Like next week. Next week. Um, we should I totally. It's I think. It's, anyway, we should totally no, it go is next Monday. Good. We should totally go to Target and look for it. I mean, we we'll probably find it at the grocery store too. Like, maybe not ours, but. <laughs> Regular grocery stores. I'm sure. Um, okay. Final Fantasy 15 for the PS4. Not this weird mobile thing that you I keep mentioned. seeing ads for Final Fantasy 15, like Mobile Army or something crap like that. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want your mobile game. No. Very few people have done a mobile game in such a way that I actually care about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is an anniversary update. That allows players to not be stuck playing the same, the main character person. I don't remember their name because I Noctis. I do my research. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm familiar with these characters. There's a lot of cosplay. God. There's a lot of cosplay. I believe that. Um, 
but you it, before you were just locked playing as Noctis the whole time, and now you can play as Ignis, Prompto, and Gladiolus, which are amazing top-notch names. Gladiolus sounds like something that exists within my throat. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Gladiolus. Like, I have an inflamed Gladiolus. <laughs> <laughs> It's been real sore this week. should really get that removed. It's right on top of my Ignis. Uh (laughs) Um, (laughs) Apparently. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) I quit. I'm done with the podcast forever. Yeah, bye. Um, Apparently, Squint. Squint. (laughs) Listen, your your company shouldn't sound like Squeenix. I only took a sip of whiskey. I swear. Um, Square Enix sent out a survey earlier this year asking its, like, people what they wanted out of the game. And a lot of people said, like, I want to be able to play as the other characters or I want new playable characters or whatever the fuck. And I guess based on the update, which I'm not super familiar with because I don't play the game, and Jeff hasn't since the update, um, they try to get a little bit of everybody's input and actually utilize it and do it, which is pretty cool of Square Enix to do. I just hit a weird octave there. Um, To go, okay, 10,000 people want this thing. 10,000 people want this other thing. Why don't we do some of those things? That's pretty great. Why don't we great. appease the fan base? Yeah, whoa, what a fucking That's, novel concept. It is, it really is. You know, I don't think that'll work. <laughs> Probably <laughs> sounds, not. Sounds fake, but I, okay. I just don't think paying customers know what they want. I, you know, I don't, I don't think they know what they want. <laughs> I know they want to pay less. Shoe store. Which is, by the way, gone from Ringe. Just a slight offshoot. It's not there anymore. I forgot there was one there. Yep, that's the only one I knew about. Huh. It's gone now. There's one in the. It's all over. There's one in the mall, and there's one at the Kmart <laughs> Plaza. Hopping over to Pocket Camp again for a second. Uh, the cryptic, cryptic, cryptic. The cryptid roommate just texted me and said that he thinks his Pocket Camp is haunted. Oh no! <laughs> when I asked why, he said there was an invisible wall the size of an NPC. I just had to walk around in a place where NPCs never stand. <laughs> oh my god. Whoa. He got the like this Ashes is, Dead version of this Pokemon. Is what he gets for making a haunted sink room. Oh my god. <laughs> He's obviously summoned these ghosts. He has. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. If if anything scary comes of this core, you know it's gonna be a very campy horror story. Ayy. Wow. Ayy. You really Let's get back to the actual news. I really wanted to say Bustin makes me feel good, and you had to go there and just say a <laughs> dumb joke. That's a lyric in the song. Bustin' makes me feel good. What were the 80s? I mean, it makes a lot of people feel good. (laughs) (laughs) You're fired from this podcast. (laughs) We can never come back. Don't talk to me at my 10th sons ever again. What's this? The internet's throwing red flags at us? (laughs) Shit. Oh, my God. Damn it. Uh, Anyway, back to Final Fantasy. Oh, um, that was basically it. Okay. You, can, you can play That's as cool. different characters now. I'm really excited for when Noctis <laughs> becomes playable in Final, uh, Final Fantasy. He is Final Fantasy set 15. Uh, <laughs> when he becomes a playable character in Tekken 7. Because I p- picked up Tekken 7 not even thinking about the fact that he had been announced mm-hmm. for January, I think. <coughs> and now I'm just super pumped. Yeah. Because Jeff was like, you know I'm buying you that DLC, right? And I was like, <laughs> I mean, if you don't, I am. So Yeah. One way or another, it's happening. It'll just be your early birthday present. Very excited. (laughs) Anyway. Nerd. Um, PS Plus Games December. We had... About time. I'm really anxious because I haven't looked anything up and I want to know. Tell me, Sarah, what can I play for free in the month of December? For free. Uh, Okay, for PS4, Darksiders 2, Definitive Edition. Not... not Definitive? Death. Gotcha. Innovative. I've heard Darksiders 2 is actually pretty good, and I have the full yeah. version on the Wii U already. You know, the console I don't start. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> Kung Fu Panda, Showdown of Legendary <gasps> Legends. <I'm, gasps> I want that real bad. Uh, for PS3, Siberia Collection and x Blaze Lost Memories. Okay. And for the Vita, Forma.8, Forma.8, I'm not sure, and Wanted Corp. Okay. I haven't heard of I haven't heard most of any of, of those things, except for, you know, the Dark PS4 Siders. titles, yeah. Darksiders 2. I, I just assume that there's eight Kung Fu Panda games at any given time, because they were great movies. 
so those are yours. Uh, they start, I, I think, December 5th, because usually they start on the first Tuesday of that month. So you can still get the November games until then, and you can get these games starting then. And Okay, you know. so a couple of things really quick uh, in regards to PlayStation Plus and the people that subscribe to it. Yes. Uh, I was talking with uh, Isaac the other day at work, which is, of course, GameStop itself, and we were talking about PlayStation Plus, and I was like, oh, did you not pick up Abzu when it was free? And he was like, oh, I haven't added any of the games on PlayStation Plus for free because I figure they just go away after the month. Oh, my God. So that was when I realized, oh, my God, if he doesn't know, how many other people don't know? So this public service announcement has been brought to you by Isaac Corp and his lack of knowledge <laughs> in how PlayStation Plus works. Yeah. So PlayStation Plus, if you go in for the free month and you just click on Add to Library for the free games, you don't have to download them right away. Yep. But it gets added to your library, and then for the rest, any time that you have PlayStation Plus subscription active, you can download any of those games that are in your library. Yep. Even if, um, like, say you got all of last year's free games, and then you canceled for six months, and then came back in, say, June, you would still have all of the games from last year that you claimed. Yep. As yeah, long they're all as added once to your you, library. Once you get active again. Basically checking that you have an active PlayStation yeah. Plus subscription, and if you do, you have whatever games are in your library that you can play. Yeah. So, like, you don't have to commit, you know? Just fucking Also, do I it. feel like, on a less sarcastic note, from the article we put out a few weeks ago, or that I put out a few weeks ago about the hidden message in the PlayStation 4 <laughs> system menu, Yeah. that <clears throat> probably another thing that a lot of people probably don't know, that the PlayStation 3 plays PlayStation 1 games. Is, because it, is it all PS3s, though? Or is it all just P- that It was a model. software update. Okay. There are only a handful of PlayStation 3 consoles that have the hardware necessary to run PlayStation 2 games, mm-hmm. as far as I've been told. Yeah. Because that was a specific backward compatible version you could buy when they first came out, and they yeah. don't make them anymore. I think a lot of them, because Joe bought one when it came out, Yeah. and it bricked during a system uh, update. No. I have a feeling that a lot of the backward compatibles probably had that issue. Probably. But and there was a software update that allows any PlayStation 3 to play PlayStation 1 discs. Yep. Uh, Because I was at a comic book shop last year or the year before with Annabelle and Final Fantasy 7 and 9 Mm -hmm. were or 8 and 9 were on the shelf and they said playable on PS3. And I was like, ha, someone hasn't told them. (laughs) And so I asked the guy about it and he's like, no, it was a software update. And I was like, I mean, I have a PS2, so I wasn't worried about not being able to play it. So I picked up 9, brought it home, put it in the PS3 and it's just like PlayStation 1 disc. And I was like, my whole world. Yeah. When you discovered that, sorry, when you discovered that you like were come, you can't came upstairs to hang out or something, and you just happened to mention it, and I was like, "I'm sorry, what? Yeah, <laughs> I could be playing Digimon it's, World right now. It's life changing, so nostalgia. Yeah, I, it was only like one step below um, my excitement for finding Bioshock. <laughs> Jesus Christ, and Kung Fury. Yeah, but when you discovered but, the PS1 to, to PS3 thing, you didn't barge into my house and go. That's true. I, I have Bioshock porn we need to watch. <laughs> Proxy's also fired from the podcast. <laughs> this We're is getting my, all the flags today. This is my show now, and it's not about games anymore. Um, <laughs> There's a kink for that. That's a side note, though. That is exactly why I really like doing this show, because until we started this in April, I had no idea what was fucking going on in the world at all and now i know a lot like i know people will say oh have you heard about and i'm like hell yeah i did because i'm on top of things yeah we do a gaming news podcast of course i knew yeah i kind of get to feel sassy like joe when i was like joe did you hear there's a new bubsy game coming out and he's like need him i draw fetish fan art for the (laughs) internet (laughs) yes i know there's a new bubsy game coming out um but it's kind of great because it's like that's why i do this because even if it's someone who's like not super into reading news, but they are our friends and they listen to us and whatever, they'll go, oh, this thing I'm actually interested in. Like, maybe an older person who they really liked the PS1. And they're like, oh, I could play those games on my PS3. Didn't know that, now I do. Thanks, yeah, dude. Yep, like, I'm going to have to put an article up about that because I feel like that's yeah. legitimately helpful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to wait another 10 years before... Mirror.co. UK, mirror.uk or whatever the website was yeah. puts out the hidden things you could do with your PlayStation 3. Before they decide to BuzzFeed it up. Also, just... I would like to I would like to state that when Smurry came down to help me move our TV for the studio for streaming yep. and rewire some things, the PS3 is standing upright mm-hmm. and we totally just knocked the shit over. It, <laughs> oh no. It just boom, there it went. 
And I was like, whatever, we'll worry about it in a minute because we were still moving the TV. Yeah, you kind of can't drop so that. We, to- <laughs> we, we got the TV back up. I picked the PS3 back up and it was turned on. It was like, I'm good. <laughs> So kudos, because yeah. I feel like if I dropped either of the 360s, it would have just been toast. They would have just completely shattered and there wouldn't have even been like, enough pieces yeah, on the floor. Burnt toast. Yeah. Not even like nice. Looking at them together, because I have toast. for those that aren't here in the studio with me, which um, is everybody I have two Xbox 360 consoles, like the the arcade version. So that like the old white Xbox 360 prone to overheating. Yep. And sitting next to that is my PS3. And it's just so weird now to think that these consoles came out at the same time. Yeah. Or around the same time. There were a because lot Because I feel of... like the 360 I could find anywhere for like 20 bucks. <laughs> and the PS3 is still like uh, over 100 mm-hmm. and hard to find. Mm-hmm. I have people throwing 360s at me. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just so funny, too. Like, look at the design. Like, I always liked the look of the Xboxes because they're really sleek. But now that I am a Sony person, it's like I can't. It's not pretty. The disc tray comes out. Let me just stand up my Xbox, pull out the disc tray, pop a disc in, and it falls on the floor because I'm a piece of garbage who stands their Xbox up on its side. Like, what kind of fucking universe do we live in where I have to defeat gravity to play a game? I just got really heated about that. You sure did. I don't know why. But my PS4 just sucks them up like Kirby. Oh. Um, really quickly on the nest on the note of design on the nest uh, the PlayStation 4 has now been around for long enough that people are now speculating on the design of the PlayStation 5 yep I saw some like concept designs from people on Facebook the other day that it's gonna be rectangular and black <laughs> that's a really good call but you would have been wrong with the PlayStation 3 it's curved and black I said rectangular. Not rectangle. It's no. oblong. <laughs> it's really. <coughs> Listen, uh, sweaty. Oh, my God. So they've got these strange concepts. And for those that uh, think that, oh, this is uh, this is probably what it's going to look like, it, I guarantee you it's not. No. The PlayStation 3 concept that came out when the PlayStation 2 was still, like, booming, the, uh, the controllers look like boomerangs. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. Oh, no, I don't. They, oh, boy. We'll have to look they were up. like tiny little buttons and then whoa, these like giant curved hands. Like a, like an N64 controller, but like weird. Like an N64 controller if both handles were made from the centerpiece. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly, no. open a tab, bring up Google and just look up PlayStation 3 concept. They had a design where it was an orb. The oh. system is an orb, and you just put the disc oh. into it. You know what's really funny about? Um, oh my god, I'm looking at it right <laughs> now. <laughs> you know, no, Save you know one of those, add it like? into the show notes because people need to see that. It's so bad. It looks like the ship that crashed in Prometheus. <laughs> it does. Oh my god, oh, it's, no. it's hideous. I love it. it I mean, I definitely, I'm I definitely want it, but my fingers are not like you'd have to grip the handles and then like it's my thumbs oh, are really it's small. Not good. Um, <laughs> The, the thing about concept when when it comes to <laughs> consoles and even like cars and computers is they will have concept art and they'll go, I think this will work. They build a prototype and it doesn't work. Maybe it sets fire. Maybe it explodes. Maybe it just straight up is not cohesive and not user friendly and they scrap it. But everyone goes, this concept art looked amazing. So that's what it's going to be. And it's like, no, they've gone through testing. They've practiced this and it didn't work. Guarantee, because nothing ever works the first time, and they're trying to figure out a way to make it the best it can be for you. So here's here's a big speculation question: Do you think yes the PlayStation Five or and or the Xbox binary will have <laughs> discs still, or do you think they'll go entirely download? Because I feel like industries like GameStop that thrive on having a used game market, yeah. It's really we'll be in a lot of trouble if yeah. that's the case. And they'll um, end up being like what happened in Movie Stop when everyone went to streaming. It's just going to be nothing mm, but action figures yeah. and comic books and like collectibles, which is cool and all. But but we found how quickly those kind of businesses go under. Very quickly. Um, it's It kind of freaks me out because it's like a lot of people are writing a lot of articles about, well, when is the death of the disc? When is the rebirth of digital only? But no one is saying 
no company is like, we're not going to make discs anymore. It's a lot of people saying, when is this going to happen? And nobody is saying this is when. So it's like, it's kind of scary. I, I really like having, okay. I like having discs. I like being able to look at my collection and go, I have that. That's really cool. I want to play that game because I can see it. I also really like the convenience of already being in my bed and being like, I want to play Dragon Age and it's installed so I can do that. And I don't have to fucking get up. <laughs> See, here's the thing. With uh, the game market where it's at, you've got, you're a AAA developer. You make a game and that game takes up X amount of space. Now, the transfer rate for data from a Blu-ray disc to the system can only move so fast. Yeah. Because you're running optical. It would run faster if you had a card plugged in or something like that, or if it was installed. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, cards sound like discs, and Nintendo has, like, the full gauntlet on anything that it looks <laughs> like a cartridge. Yeah. Um, so if it's probably won't go cartridge based just because Nintendo has the yeah. stranglehold on that, even though the read write speeds are a lot faster. So in turn, a lot of consoles now are becoming for those that remember early PC gaming before steam, where you get the disc, you have to install the game and then you have to also have the disc in the system to run the game Yep, is where console gaming is at now. Yeah. I had a couple of people ask, like, well, why does the system, like, why do you have to download the game now? And I'm like, it's the speed. Because yeah. it can access the game faster from your hard drive than it ever will from the disc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, the last big game that Jeff was installing, it was like 60 gigs. And, okay, listen, Jeff has like 90% of the hard drive space that's taken up. I have like two games <clears throat> at any given time. <clears throat> and... I was like, why the fuck does this have to be so big? And he was like, they can't put 60 gigs on a disc, dummy. <laughs> they with, can't. With Blu-ray, they can put, I think, 30 to 50. Yeah. They might even be but better than that now. it wouldn't even run but that great. No, because you can't pull that kind of information yeah. off of a disc fast enough so for you it, not be sitting <laughs> through load screens. It put that into perspective for me. Like, oh, I'd rather a game run great and I just can only have one game on my PS4 at a time because they're all 300 gigs. It, it started being a feature with the Xbox 360 where it would allow you when you got a game you could opt to install to the hard drive. I remember that. And I was like, this is great because it cuts in half my load times in Fallout 3. So I didn't have to worry about it. I was just like, install it and then I don't have to wait 10 minutes for every Bethesda loading screen. And now everything is installing and of course as we make the move from regular hard disk drives to solid state where everything is instantaneous Mm -hmm. access, I think that the move from disc to full digital is going to be a lot quicker than we think. Yeah. Not necessarily because discs aren't great or because companies don't want to pay to produce the disc, but <laughs> for function. Yeah. Because no one's going to want to pay for the next big AAA title and have it take forever to do anything. Yeah. I, I think maybe it could be a good thing. Not anytime soon. Like, I'm talking like a few years. If Whenever they come out with the next next generation console yeah because let's get on let's be honest just like humans game consoles are living longer now yeah a lot of that due to the birth of the internet where you can have software updates you don't have to release a brand new system just update it to, and make it better and right i feel like people know more and there's more resources of how to fix things yourself like if something happens to my computer or a console or my tv the first thing i do is look up i have this problem how do i fix it if i can i do if i can't I figure it out later instead of back in my childhood where if my Genesis broke, there was no... <laughs> the best thing you've got is blowing the cartridge. The Al Gore hadn't invented the internet yet. We couldn't have looked up how to fix a Genesis. We would have just thrown it away and maybe got a new one. Maybe not. Like, I, I feel like that's probably why, too, is they, they're made better than they used to be. And we just have more resources of how and to I keep it now, going. Especially since... Okay, like, not so much with the PlayStation 3, because you had the PS3, the PS3 Slim, and then whatever that abomination with the sliding disc tray is that Mark had. <laughs> um, but with the Xbox 360, you went from the arcade version, the old white one, yep. to the Xbox 360 Pro. Which was the black or one, the right? Elite, yeah. Um, which was the black one yeah. that had a few hardware boosts to it. Yep. It didn't wasn't so prone to overheating. Yep. And then they went from that to the Slim. Mm -hmm. which uh, I still remember the commercials for the Xbox 360 Slim and its new Space Age design, guaranteed not to red ring because we didn't install a red LED in it. (laughs) But the the entire sides of the console were essentially vents. Yeah. I bought one. (laughs) Wonderful system. Yeah. 
And I think that really sparked console developers realizing we could release several versions of our system with slight upgrades yeah. so that like your games will still run all games will still run on the original system but they'll run better on, on these this. yeah which is why you see PlayStation 4 the PS4 Slim the PS4 Pro and the Xbox 1 the Xbox 1 S the Xbox 1 X yep it's absolutely highway robbery but I mean, That's a lot of times when you're trading is. up for a new console, they'd give you all sorts of like, oh, you get extra trade-in credit towards your new console. Yeah. It's not like the days of my childhood when I was like, in my mind, I could just bring my old console in and swap it for the new one. <laughs> I know that was never the case. Never. But, <laughs> but it would have been great. Yep. Oh, I'd like to upgrade. Thank you. <laughs> no caveats, please. Thank you. Uh, anyway, back to news. <laughs> what else have we got on our docket? <laughs> it's going to be a long episode. Um, <laughs> the Last of Us Part 2. Um, okay, next weekend, there's something called PlayStation Experience. And before we did this podcast, I would never have fucking known what this was. <clears throat> um, it's like a... Is it an experience with it's PlayStation? An, it's an experience. Um, maybe it's like a Nintendo Direct thing, but for PlayStation. Um, there's going to be a panel, a Last of Us Part 2 panel next weekend. Um, I don't have the exact date or time or anything or where to find it because fucking... No one who writes articles is as thorough as I am when I'm writing articles. So I'll figure it out. Um, but it will be The Last of Us Part 2, Meet the Cast. With the director, Neil Druckerman, writer Hallie Ga- Gross, excuse me, and various members of the game's cast. They don't want to say which members of the game's cast, like whether it's the new people or um, Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson, who are Joel and Ellie, but hopefully... They're there, and hopefully at least a couple of the new people are there just to, like, talk about stuff, because they're going to talk about, like, mocap and the game's writing and stuff. They're not going to say any spoilers, obviously, but I really like watching actors and voice actors talk about mocap, especially if they're only voice actors and not really regular actors, because they're super... I mean, they do tie in a lot. Yeah, especially if you do mocap. But, like, a lot of (laughs) voice actors think it's really funny when they first start doing mocap, because you're just talking to yourself in this really weird suit with dots all over you. Once you do it a few times, you're like, I'm used to it. But just to talk to yourself with no one else there except the camera people, you're like, I feel silly. (laughs) But that's next weekend. And there's also going to be an Uncharted panel at 5 p.m. next Saturday um, featuring cast members of Uncharted and some developers. So that's fucking exciting because the Uncharted cast is really great. Okay, also, the last thing. Shout out to the Colossus developers are hiring for a new game in development. Ooh, yeah. Even though they want. just came out with a new game and they're making the new Shadow Don't of the Colossus, they're hiring new people for a new game. Hiring is always a good thing in the game industry. We're not losing people. Yeah. True. Um, so that's really fun. Sweet. So join us again <laughs> next week where we talk your ears more about gaming news. Yeah. And until next time, you can find out more about us on yadudegamers.com. And check out all the other cool stuff we do. Hell yeah. Until next time, game on. And happy candle nights, because it's December 1st.